Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as I show you how to do the Scribera Daisy Pendant featuring some beautiful daggers, check glass, and some sea beads. Remember, if you need any materials, want to buy the kit or anything, go ahead and look below the video on YouTube or on the side, and we'll be happy to get everything ready for you. Let's get ready to get started on this fun floral design. So the first thing that we want to do is to create our petals. And we're going to create the petals, putting them on one by one rather than all 10 in a row because we are going to add seed beads for the front and the back of the pendant that act as the bezel at the same time as we're creating. So what we're gonna do is I have some size six gray dragon thread here and a size 10 needle, and I'm gonna put on my first petal. If we put the petals on right next to one another, it's sometimes really hard to get into the interior. So what we're gonna do is a 15, 11, 15, and we're gonna sew back through that petal. We're gonna do this twice on each petal. One grouping is going to go towards the front of the petal and one group of seed beads, 15, 11, 15, is going to go through the back. So we're sewing through that three times through that petal. As we pull that thread through the petal, you just wanna make sure again that one goes to one side, one goes to the other side, and they just kind of sit hanging out there ready to put on my next petal. Grab your next petal in the design and repeat the same thing. 15, 11, 15. This time when you pull the thread through, you wanna make sure that you don't have a ton of extra thread showing. So you're gonna go back through that same petal from the last petal towards the seed beads that you just added. Those seed beads are gonna to go to the front of one of the sides and see how those petals sit right next to one another. You wanna get them as close as possible. Put on your seed beads then for the next side, 11 in the middle, 15's on the side. So back through that same petal that your thread is currently coming out of, because one of these is gonna to go towards, oops, one of these is going to go towards the front bezel and one is going to go towards the back bezel. Take those seed beads, push them around there. So you have a nice tight pull. And then see how we're starting to establish that line with the daggers in the middle, those little petals, and then our seed beads on either side. We have two done now. We have eight more to go. If the seed beads flop from one side to another, no fear. We're going to make them sit correctly as we go further in the design. So this is our first two. Continue on with eight more before we pull them into a rounded loop. Once you have the seed beads around your petals, and every once in a while you'll find a petal that's a little bit taller than the rest here and here, that adds character to it. So I like to keep those in. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to go ahead and tie this into that floral shape. So you're gonna take your daggers there that are all decorated with your 15s and your 11s on the side. You're gonna grab the end and literally just tie the end together in a knot. Make sure that you are not is not going around any seed beads. And we're gonna leave that tail there so we can knot onto it after the project. So at this point, we have basically the front and the back established. We're gonna close up the back and then we're gonna to move to the front. So to close up the back of the design, getting ready to put in our check cab here, what we are going to do is basically pick up all the 11 O's that we have in the middle, and we're gonna add one more 11 O to each of our middle components. So my needle and thread are right here coming out one of my daggers. I'm gonna step up through my 15 and my 11, both using that beautiful champagne color. And I'm gonna grab an 11, skip over the 15s, and sew into the next 11. Again, just make sure as you're doing this that you don't get a lot of extra thread in the way and you're just going around catching all 10 of those top sections of your 1115. You can see this one here is up a little bit. I'm just kind of pressing that down with my fingernail because that will go towards the back, or sorry, towards the front. So right now we're going through, adding one seed bead, picking up the center 11 on one side, and basically closing up the back. We're gonna go through, add an 11, between each one of our 11s that's already there. And then after we do so, I want you to take your needle and thread and sew back around through all of those beads. So you're gonna go back through the 11s that you already had on 
and the 11s that are there, you're going to be able to go through and reinforce and tighten that up. The reason we want to reinforce and tighten that up is because we are going to be putting a check cab in the middle. If you want to, you can bling it up and put a crystal rivoli in there. I'm sticking, I like with the check cab to keep it more of that natural flower look. Anytime you have a cabochon or anything that you're holding in where you create a bezel, it's always a great idea to go around that a second time with your thread. Think about it almost as your clasp area where it gets kind of the most wear and tear because you wanna make sure that it does not open up. So at this point here, I'm through all of my beads. You can see it's not sitting great. Don't worry about that. And now I'm gonna go back through, give that tight pull. As you pull, you'll see that center start to come in. Start to come in. And I'm gonna go back around and just sew through all 20 11 O's, the 10 that were originally there and the 10 that I just added between the originals. Once we have our back established, we're going to take our needle and thread toward the front. So I've come out one of my 11, I've gone down through the 15 right after the 11, and then I'm gonna sew through the petal that sits right above that 11. So you must feel like you're sewing backwards, but that's staying with that thread line that your thread was originally coming out of. Flipping over now to the front side, moving that knot to the back, you're going to step up just like we did through the 15 and the 11 here to the front side of the project. We're gonna go around and add some seed beads. Here's where you'll notice you need to pull some of those beads up. You wanna make sure as much as possible to pull up so you don't have any of the 15s hanging out below the project. So kind of open up this little area here, get ready to put your cabochon in, and we'll get ready to go around now, adding in more of our seed beads and getting ready to stick our cab in the middle. So at this point, I've dropped my cab in there and you can use the bronze, you can use a little bit lighter if you want that metallic mix. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did along the back, picking up an 11 and sewing through all the 11s that are there. So we're just repeating. This time I'm holding that cab in place. It's gonna sit right along that back bezel that you just created. And we're literally repeating the exact same thing. So going around here, grabbing an 11, sewing through the next 11, and what this is gonna do is help stabilize it because it is great after this is done and pulled in, your petals do not flip flop at all, which is a huge issue a lot with daggers and petals. So I'm gonna go through, adding an 11, picking up that center 11 that's already there, sewing through. Just like we did along the back, once we get done with one rotation, adding in 10 more 11s between the 11s that are already there, we're gonna sew back through those 20 beads again to tighten up along the front of the design. Now that we have our front bezel really tightly in there, what we're going to do is we're gonna add an 11 on the exterior between our 15 O's. Now it's easier to kind of point out because it's hard to see on the video, but you're gonna have two of your 15 O's that are lined up right next to one another, 15, 15, right between the petal. What we're gonna do is sew through both of those beads, one going basically up and down. We're gonna add another 11 O. The 11 O is gonna sit right above that original center 11 O. So I've sewed back through the beads a little bit. I'm coming down through that 15. I'm gonna sew up through the next 15, following the regular thread line, because I'm sewing up through. The next bead that it normally would go through is an 11 that was already there. I'm adding a new 11, and then I'm gonna sew down through the 15. That's right after. Once again, I'm gonna sew up through the next 15, which I wanted to show may be hiding down below. So you might need to go in with your needle or even with your little reamer here or with your um, all there, I'm gonna pick it up. I'm sewing then through that 15 as well. So I've gone through, I'm coming up through that one, gonna sew down through the 15, through the next one there, which you sometimes, again, just kind of have to pull up there, sewing through. Once I come out from that 15 here, and if you wanna to switch to a size uh, 12 needle, you can certainly do that. I'm still able to do it with a 10, so just a little bit tighter of a pull. You sew through those two 11s, and as you sew through those two 11s, you pick up the next 11, and then once again, go over, or sorry, throw, sew through those two 15s, you pick up the next 11, sew it in, go through that first 15, up through the second 15, 
ready to go with the next 11. So just like we had our 10 11s that were kind of points on the interior originally, we're gonna have 10 11s that are the points on the exterior now as we go around the whole piece, adding in an 11 0 and sewing through the 15 after the 11 0 and up through the next 15 that's there. And then just be aware that 15 may be hiding down a little bit. Just grab it and then you're good to sew through. As you sew through, just give a little tight pull and those petals, those extra 11s just end nicely at the top. Those 11s are what we're gonna go through then and add on our three millimeter check rounds along the exterior to really make it into that Gerber Daisy look. The second to last step, if you choose to do this, now you don't need to do this, remember, most designs you can kind of stop wherever you want. If you don't want to add the extra or you want to add an extra petal, change it up. Post pictures in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. We'd love to see the change up. I'm stepping up, going through the first 11 0 that I just added as I went around and added those 10 11s in. From there, I'm going to grab my ancient gold three millimeter rounds, grab one, sew through the next 11. Remember those 10 and 11s that we just grabbed onto? That's what we are sewing through. So it's super simple. After this, our only thing we need to do is create a bale. When it comes to creating a bale, you can do that several ways. I'm gonna show you a simple way. I like on the sample piece, how it kind of hides behind the actual cord. You could do a seed beaded necklace for it as well or this would also look fantastic as a brooch or a pin. Hat pin. Okay, so we're going around here. We're adding 10 of our check glass. And then we're gonna go and switch from using or beading along the front. The front is completely finished now to going along the back. And I'm just picking up these ancient gold. I love the color variety that they have to use that it's kind of more of that natural look. And after you get the last one in there, you're just going to sew through the 11 0 Link those in, give a little pull. It'll make it a tiny bit three-dimensional. See how it sits off there. And now we have to get to the back. So the front is done. Now it's time to go to the back of the design. To go to the back of the design, I'm coming out in an 11 0 I'm going to sneak back almost between the design, grab on to one of the 15s there. Sew towards the back. Come out the back, you're never gonna see it, so don't worry too, too much. Go in here then, stepping up through and coming out one of my 11 O's that are near the flower pattern, right along the back. From here, we're gonna do a simple ladder stitch. So our simple ladder stitch can consist of literally just one bead, simple ladder. I'm gonna switch it up and do two beads just to make it a little bit more substantial. If you want to, you could also have two things going along the side so it works as a slide as well. So I'm coming out of these two beads here. I'm gonna grab two more 11s and then I'm gonna sew through the last two beads that my thread just exited. You might need to bend that a little bit to do so. Sewing out those two beads then, that is gonna be the first step in that ladder stitch. Two beads go on. Move that starter thread out of the way for a second. Back through the two beads that you just added. And then two more beads go on. So back through the two beads that your thread is currently coming out of. And then progress through the two beads that you just added. That gets us three beads for our ladder stitch, or three rows rather, the two that were already there, the three that we just added. Here's row number four, and I'm going to go till I have seven rows. What that's going to do is give me a lot of options when it comes to the size of the cord. I like this simple two, one and a half to two millimeter cord going through. You can change it up onto a chain. We have some great chains to use going through and pulling that ladder stitch. The last thing we're gonna do then is secure the ladder stitch down along the project, basically sewing back through row number one, which was the two original beads. Sewing through here. One more group of two I'll do, and then we'll round it out. 
The very final thing, tie a knot and get rid of your thread. So from here, I'm going to bend this down. That's gonna make that little loop, one more. Make my loop the right size here. And we're gonna take this thread now, bend it back down towards the project. I'm going back through those original two beads. My thread's coming out the top here. I'm going back through them from that top towards the bottom. And if you have trouble doing that, you can go ahead and catch into row number two. And then you wanna come back through your last row at row number seven. I'm gonna reinforce that twice, that loop. See how it makes nice that nice little loop there? Going back through that last one as well. Oops, making that a little bit tighter. Last thing I'm gonna do then is so back through the project toward that thread start or that thread end going down here and once i bring my thread and needle right out towards the knot i'm simply going to tie the knot to finish up the project grab your thread end right over left left over right it's a really simple easy way to do the bail the cabs are 10 millimeter so we do have a bunch of 10 millimeter Rivoli's if you wanna go ahead and add a little bit of bling in there, change up all your different clasps, burn that thread down, and then the burden thread down towards the project to finish up your design. I actually love how this has two petals that are a little bit bigger. I think it adds so much to the design to have that flow. Thanks so much for joining me in this Gabera Daisy design. Remember, if you are doing the design, you can change it up, do some different beads along the side, some crystals, and even a Rivoli instead of the check button if you want to, instead of that cab in there. Remember, if you do make any changes, please comment so on the YouTube video. We love to see that feedback and to help out other Potomac beaters. As always, if you haven't yet, subscribe and stay tuned for our next inspirational design.